The World View from Valencia. As I said, this presentation is based on the Festival of Media Awards, which we launched last year, um, and we received about 600 odd entries um, on our first year. Uh, we've increased that this year as well, and as I said, those amongst you who are going to be staying with us um, will be able to see uh, who's won this year. So, the uh, Festival of Media Awards philosophy. Um, there's, there's a few things here. Brands are like people. Ideas have to be big, but channels must be small. We heard quite a lot yesterday about big ideas, uh, and then activation throughout channels. Uh, the world is your copywriter. Um, I think we're all kind of aware of the potential of crowdsourcing, certainly mentioned by a few of our speakers um, yesterday. And with the advent of social media, it's kind of changing how we get our ideas, where we get them from, and, um, uh, and indeed uh, the kind of nature of our industry. Um, and finally, the industry is entering a digital, sustainable, and content-driven future. Um, I think every year of the Festival of Media, um, We've, Charlie and I have sat down six months in advance and thought to ourselves, what's the theme? What's the one thing that we really need to talk about this year? And the one thing that always comes back is change, transition, evolution, revolution. Um, I think we're still going through that, and that's purely driven by technological change. So, um, this year's Festival of Media Awards, 663 entries, 123 shortlisted, which hopefully you've had a chance to look at um, out by the cream booths um, in the foyer. Um, 46 participating countries, so we have a truly global footprint, which is fantastic. Uh, wonderful to see work from um, all continents. Um, 14 entering categories, and question mark, how many media agencies are going to be celebrating later on this evening? So, what we did is when we looked at the uh, entries from last year, and again the entries from this year, um, there was clear that there were some large meta trends um, which we could draw from it. Now, we, we took these and we worked them into um, a little presentation that's fairly light and has eight um, key points. You'll be very, very happy to know that I'm not going to show you eight this morning. Um, we're just going to concentrate on these four, brave, engaging, helpful, and innovative, some of, I think, the most interesting trends that we've seen. So, brave. What do we mean by being brave? Okay, um, this is one of the shortlisted um, awards from this year, and it's actually a kind of second year of a campaign. Uh, I believe, actually, the first year won the People's Award last year, um, and it was uh, India to shave or not. And um, this is the follow-up campaign from that. When we're talking about bravery, it can mean a number of different things. In this case, uh, the brave move is um, Gillette Mac 3 deciding to put all its money into research and then use that research uh, to inform their campaign and then activating without a huge media spend. Um, rather than um, going into detail, I'm going to show you the video. Um, so if you guys can uh, play it for me, great. Let me hear you shout! Come on! So much to our nails and hair. You want a pretty looking girl beside you, so do we. Men, they don't even spend five minutes on their appearance. We want a nice looking groomed man. for the Gillette Shave India movement. But as a world member, I would request all men to shave. Clean shaven man is always more appealing. I like clean shaven look. Shaving every day is extremely good.
So a brave decision to put the money into um, research as opposed to um, really doing media spend. Um, and we, I think we heard a lot yesterday also about um, owned, bought and earned media. Uh, and uh, if you can earn your media and you can um, leverage that through research, which then hits the nerve and, and gets amplified, then uh, you're in a very good space. So why be brave? Um, this, this should be a really frightening slide. Um, if you look at it, because trust in traditional advertising is declining, and if you look at the chart there, we're trusted just slightly less than politicians. No, slightly more than politicians, sorry, at the moment. Um, so not, not a particularly um, good state to be in. So you need to be brave um, to stand out. Why are you brave? Well, because traditional channels are too cluttered. Uh, this is TV spot advertising as a percentage of total broadcasting. Um, so you can see in the US there, almost 25% of all prime time airtime is actually taken up by advertising. So you're going to be competing in a, in a really, really cluttered environment. So again, if you can be brave, you can stand out, you can differentiate, um, you're going to get better results. Why be brave? Well, because media usage is no longer bilateral as well. Um, the question is, 13 to 21 year olds, what are you doing when you are watching TV? I'm sure there's a few, a few percent somewhere in there that said a few things which you can't really put on a chart. Um, but uh, the, point, the point of the chart is uh, what we all know, uh, digital natives, um, they're not just sitting there watching the television, so the good chance is they're not actually going to see your spot anyway. You know, they're on the phone, they're using the internet, um, which is my personal favourite, just IMD being absolutely everything that I see. Um, I don't believe that 33% of them are actually doing their homework. Um, um, or they're listening to music, or they're playing games. So um, there's, an, there's an attention competition going on as well. So bravery, and um, this was the winner for last year. Um, it was uh, a campaign by Dove in Canada. Um, this was very interesting because what they decided to do um, was uh, activate through a play. Um, so the idea was to try and connect uh, and show the kind of beauty of ageing uh, and amplify their um, products, brand attributes. But rather than taking a traditional course of that, they sat down, thought how best to do it, and engaged a playwright, uh, then activated um, and amplified that strategy um, using traditional channels. Uh, ended up with 124 million media impressions delivered. Um, tickets completely sold out. Um, and they've received requests for film purchase and repeat broadcasts, which is another interesting thing, a brand creating its own IP and actually then selling that on um, into the content market. Engage. I always wonder when I look at this slide, very famous night, Obama's there, you know, taking the accolade and winning the award, and, you know, someone's sitting, someone's paid their money and they're sitting behind that wall. Where were you, Dad, when Obama was being voted president? Uh, I was there some, but I was sitting behind a massive wall for the evening, so I couldn't see what was going on. So, quick quote, A.G. Lafley, CEO of P&G, the more in control we are, the more out of touch we become, but the more willing we are to let go a little, the more we're finding we get in touch with consumers. Um, what we're really talking about is, is what a lot of us are battling with, and it's the difference between our push model, where we're talking, uh, and our engagement model, where we're listening and giving up some of that control and actually allowing the consumer to decide. Um, this is another shortlist um, entry for this year's Festival of Media Awards. I should just stress, because I, I'm showing you these now, doesn't mean they've won. I merely thought these were quite interesting and illustrated some points, and there uh, was some good work to watch. Um, this one is, uh, if you're English, it's called Balls. If you're Mexican, it's called huevos, eggs. Cojones would have done just as well. Um, can you cue the video, please? Football fans, we are the 12th player on the pitch. We leave the team when they are down. Our team, our country Mexico, we're about to miss out the World Cup 2010. They needed their 12th player more than ever. But who was looking out for me and my fellow fans? Not these guys. Then along came Night to Fire Us Up. They wanted to be our official national team supporter brand and help us rally all Mexican fans for the qualifying game against USA. For us, the World Cup was full of almost and maybes, but we never gave up hope, because we have courage, gods, fighting spirit, we have huevos. So, Nike made huevos our rallying cry, and created a fan movement in the time for the final game. 
that would spread quickly amongst my fellow fans. The time to criticize our team was over. It was time for the power of huevos to convert the biggest critics into words of encouragement. Without first the present tense definitions of huevos became the ads. And words of encouragement in editorials changed to huevos. A big billboard asked us to make a difference with huevos. Thousands of fans joined at the Nike Huevos Facebook page. We organized to meet at the Nike store before the game. And Nike Fly posted a Huevos Manifesto, co-created by us. We had two options, be quiet or do something about it. Decorated fan buses and bands took us to the game. We dressed up with Huevos t-shirts and fluttered Huevos flags. Then, we all filled the stadium with the sound of Mexico qualified. As for me and my friends, we are heading to South Africa and Nike Huevos is going with us. Listen out for our shout when Mexico plays.